All right, let's jump right in. If you're getting into the home lab world, chances are you've hit this exact wall when it comes to virtualization. Today, we're gonna clear up one of the most confusing first steps out there. How do you actually install Proxmox? Does this question look familiar? I bet you've typed some version of this into a search bar, probably more than once. It's a totally fair question. You see, Proxmox has its own installer, but then you hear it's based on Debian, and suddenly, you're confused. But here's the thing. You are absolutely not alone. This is probably one of the biggest hurdles for people just getting started. So in this explainer, we're gonna break it all down, make it super simple, and give you a clear path so you can just get going. Okay, before we can even choose an installation path, we had to tackle a much more basic question. What is Proxmox, really? Because honestly, understanding this is the key that unlocks the entire puzzle. Here it is, the core concept. Proxmox VE is what's known as a bare metal hypervisor. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying it's not a program you install on top of Windows or another OS. Nope. You install it directly onto your computer's hardware, and it becomes the operating system. And this right here, this is the real aha moment that makes it all click. Think of Debian Linux as a powerful engine. Proxmox takes that engine and then builds the entire car around it. You know, the body, the seats, the dashboard, all the features. You don't need to go find and install the engine separately because it's already in the car when you get it. And what a car it is. On top of that solid Debian foundation, Proxmox layers on all this incredible tech. You get KVM for running full-blown virtual machines, LXC for these super light and fast containers, amazing storage options, and of course, that beautiful web UI that lets you manage everything. It's the whole package. So now that we know Proxmox is the whole car, not just the part you add on, let's look at the two main ways you can get this thing up and running in your own garage. So you're at a crossroads. On one side, you've got the ISO path. This is the official all-in-one way, and spoiler alert, it's what we recommend for just about everyone. On the other side is the Debian path. This is a much more hands-on, advanced route where you manually add Proxmox to an existing Debian install. Let's dig into each one. First up, the main event, installing Proxmox directly from the official ISO file. This is the simple, straightforward, it just works method. And the process really couldn't be simpler. You go to the website, you download the one installer file, you use a tool to flash it onto a USB stick, you pop that stick into your machine and boot from it. And then you just follow the on-screen guide. That's it. No command line, no messing with software packages. It's all done for you. And the reasons to go this route are pretty huge. It's totally beginner friendly. It is the most stable and officially supported method out there. And it is so, so fast. You can go from a completely blank machine to a running hypervisor with that web login page in like 15 minutes. So if the ISO path is so great, why does this other path even exist? Let's take a look at the more manual expert level option, installing Proxmox on top of a Debian system you've already set up. Yeah, you can see right away, this is a whole different beast. You have to start by installing a bare bones Debian system yourself. Then you have to manually edit files to add the Proxmox software sources, install a bunch of packages from the command line, and then reconfigure really important stuff like your networking. It definitely requires you to know what you're doing. So why would anyone go through all that trouble? Well, it really comes down to some pretty specific niche use cases. Maybe you need absolute total control over every single package on the base system. Or maybe you've got some really obscure hardware that needs a special driver that isn't in the standard Proxmox installer. This is a power user move, not the place to start. Now, let's get real for a second. No matter which path you choose, there's one hurdle that trips up almost everybody at some point. Just getting the darn machine to boot from the USB installer in the first place. Let's talk about that. I absolutely love this quote from a user online because it perfectly captures that feeling of frustration. We've all been there, right? You think you did everything right, but you used the wrong tool to make your USB drive, and now you've wasted an entire day just staring at a black screen. So here's your quick troubleshooting checklist. If the USB drive doesn't even show up as an option, dive into your BIOS and check the boot order. If the installer starts but then fails with weird errors, your download might have been corrupted. Always verify it. And for the tool to make the USB, just stick with the classics, Belena Etcher or Rufus. They just work. And as we just saw, Ventoy, as cool as it is for other things, is known to cause major headaches with Proxmox. 
Okay, beyond the USB stick itself, there are a couple of sneaky settings deep inside your computer's BIOS that can stop your install dead in its tracks before it even begins. Here are the two big ones you have to check. First, Secure Boot. This security feature can block what it sees as unsigned operating systems, and that includes the Proxmox installer. You have to go into your BIOS and turn it off. Second, make sure your boot mode is consistent. If you make a UEFI installer, boot in UEFI mode. If you mix and match, you're just going to get a blinking cursor. Okay, so we've looked at the what, the how, and the what to watch out for. So where does that leave us? What's the final definitive recommendation from the folks who have been through this a thousand times? This quote from the community just says it all, doesn't it? The consensus could not be clearer. Don't make your life harder than it needs to be. For your own sanity, for simplicity, for stability, the Proxmox ISO is the way. And if you need a number to really drive that point home, here it is. 99%. For 99% of people, from the person building their very first home lab to a small business setting up a server, the ISO installer is the right call. That Debian method is really just for that tiny 1% with super specific advanced needs. So if you walk away with just one thing from all of this, let it be this. All that initial confusion just melts away. The second you realize that Proxmox isn't just an app, it is the operating system. It's the whole car. You don't install an OS on top of another OS. And with that, the path forward should be crystal clear. Grab that ISO, make sure Secure Boot is off, use Belina Etcher, and in just a few minutes, you'll be looking at that Proxmox login screen. So the only question left is, what amazing things are you going to build with it first?